In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this really lovely, sweet looking needle felted hedgehog. My name is Charlotte Allen and you've reached my channel, The Felting Alchemist. So welcome to part one of our needle felted hedgehog tutorial. So this is great for anyone that's just starting out needle felting. It's super easy to follow. There are no armatures in it, so you don't have to worry about breaking any needles or anything like that. It's just a really super easy, super cute tutorial that anyone can follow. So let's not waste any more time talking about it and let's get stuck into this tutorial. So for this sculpture, you're going to need the following tools and equipment. You're going to need 25 grams of fox sheet wool bats or something very similar. A wool bat that's got a beigey colour to it that's nice and thick and lofty. You're also going to need 15 grams of a medium brown coloured wool bat. I'm using a Coradale, but you can use whichever kind of wool that you like. I'm also going to be using my fine and my medium twisted needles in addition to my twisted star needle which is my singular needle. You'll need a tape measure, your felting mat, a pinch of white gotland wool bats, you'll want five grams of a lighter brown wool, lighter than the brown you're using for the spines of your hedgehog, this is a Coradell as well that I'm using, but again, you can use whichever brown wool bats that you want to use. Um, I'm also going to be using embroidery scissors, and you'll also want a pinch of brown New Zealand merino roving as well. So now I've covered all of the tools and equipment that you're going to need to make your hedgehog, let's crack on and start our first lesson. So for this sculpture, you're going to need the following tools and equipment. You're going to need 25 grams of fox sheet wool bats or something very similar. A wool bat that's got a beigey colour to it that's nice and thick and lofty. You're also going to need 15 grams of a medium brown coloured wool bat. I'm using a Coradale, but you can use whichever kind of wool that you like. I'm also going to be using my fine and my medium twisted needles in addition to my twisted star needle which is my singular needle. You'll need a tape measure, your felting mat, a pinch of white gotland wool bats, you'll want 5 grams of a lighter brown wool, lighter than the brown you're using for the spines of your hedgehog. This is a Coradell as well that I'm using, but again, you can use whichever brown wool bats that you want to use. Um, I'm also going to be using embroidery scissors, and you'll also want a pinch of brown New Zealand merino roving as well. So now I've covered all of the tools and equipment that you're going to need to make your hedgehog, let's crack on and start our first lesson. So in this tutorial, we are going to be making a hedgehog. And to do this, we are going to start off by using some fox sheep wool. And the reason I like using this is because it's um, got nice colour to it. It's very lofty and it's very easy to felt into a 3D sculpture. So as a beginner's project, this wool is perfect. So I've just torn off a section, a long section of the fox sheep wool. And I'm going to measure it now. Um, and you want it to be around 20 inches in length, sort of there or thereabouts. So this is, it's about 21. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect in terms of the width. It doesn't need to be really neat. Um, so this, or the overall width is about three inches. And then you want it to be relatively lofty. So it's about one and a half, one inch, one and a half inches in thickness. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our wool and I'm going to hold it with my dominant hand and then with my left hand I'm going to fold the top over so you've got a nice flat line. Then what I'm going to do is pinch the ends in and then I'm just going to fold it inwards again on itself. And then I'm going to hold it nice and taut, fold it down and then I'm going to start turning it You'll end up with these corners, but just push them down with your thumb, push them into the wall, and you want it to be relatively taut. You don't want too many air pockets in this, because if you have too many air pockets, it just takes a lot longer to felt everything down. So keep turning your ball until you reach the end of the wall, 
keeping it nice and taut. You don't want it to be really, really tight, but you do want to have that firmness there. If it's too tight, then you'll end up with lots of very hard areas and you don't want to felt it down too hard initially. You want it to have some squish to it so that you can add the eyes and the and the mouth in later on and kind of make it look um, as realistic as possible. So what I'm doing, I've taken my medium twisted needle and I'm just felting down all those soft areas. And you can be quite rough with this because you don't have any armature inside. You're not going to break your needles as long as you make sure that when you're using your needles, you're pushing them in and then pulling them out in the same direction. So I'm just turning the ball and then I'm felting down any corners that are sticking out. I'm felting them down so we're getting more of a ball shaped finish to the, to the wall. I'm felting down any loose ends all the while looking for any looseness. So I'm just going to keep turning my ball and just keep felting until I've got to a medium firmness. So this can take a few minutes and you can see where I'm pushing my finger in. There is quite a lot of looseness there. But the nice thing with this project is that it is very simple to do um, and you don't really need um, many pieces of equipment or materials to to get to the end result. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to give it a roll in my hands and what this does is you roll the ball in your hands like we did earlier when we were making our needle felted balls. It just helps to distribute the wool evenly around the ball and it also shows me where there's additional bits of looseness that we need to, to tack in. So I found a bit of looseness which I'm just going to use my medium needle again to felt into itself. And don't concentrate too much on one side. Try and keep turning the wool so you're getting an even felt. Otherwise what you'll find is you'll end up with one side that's quite heavily felted in and then other areas that aren't so much and you, you don't get an even finish then. So just keep going round and the best way to check is just to feel it. So what I want to do is make that ball a little bit bigger. It's a bit on the small side at the moment. So I'm just going to tear off another section of the fox sheep ball and this time I'm going to take a slightly shorter piece. So this time it needs to be about sort of 14 inches. Obviously if you tear off a little bit more and yours is a little bit thicker then you won't need to do this. But I just want the hedgehog to be a little bit larger than it is currently. So that's about 13 inches in length. I'm just going to tease it out a bit to get it a bit more even. And then I'm just going to measure the width and that's about three inches again, so the same as before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ball that we've already made and I'm just going to place it at the top and then all I'm going to do is just roll this wall over the top of the ball we've already made, teasing it slightly just to make sure that it's um, even all the way through. It's the same size all the way down and I'm just going to turn the ball as I wrap the additional wall around it until I get to the end and then I'm just going to take my medium needle again, my medium twisted needle and I'm just going to felt that down. And again you want to concentrate on felting down those corners, any looseness within the ball. Obviously you're going to have a lot of looseness initially where you've, you've wrapped that extra wall over the top if you need to do that. It might be that you're happy with the size of your ball and you don't want to go any further and that's absolutely fine especially if you want to make like a baby hedgehog as opposed to an adult hedgehog so i'm just going round as before with my needle and i'm just felting all of that down so that we've got that medium firmness that we're looking for and this can take a little bit of time but just be patient it's quite cathartic felting things kind of you're focusing on just the felting and you tend to sort of not worry about other things so it's quite a nice way of 
relaxing, especially as you're kind of stabbing something into a piece of wall. So if you've had like a bad day, you uh, you can take all your uh, angers and frustrations out on your needle felting project, which I always find quite quite helpful if I've uh, if I've had a bad day. Please don't judge me. So I'm just going over this and you might find with the fox sheep wool, because it's quite rough and ready, you might get a little bit of, um, sort of additional pieces of grass and things in it, but don't worry. I think it kind of just adds to the final kind of character of the project that you're making. And I like the fact that with this wall, because you've got the sort of the beige colour, but you've also got those sort of darker pieces of brown wool coming through, it gives more of a realistic look to your hedgehog, which is quite nice. So I'm being quite firm with this now. I'm stabbing the needle almost all the way through. Always be careful of your fingers. Always make sure that when you're stabbing, um, you, you do want to wear finger gloves, especially when you're starting out. Um, but always just make sure that you're keeping your fingers out of the way when you're stabbing a project. And always make sure that you're stabbing it onto the felting mat. Don't be tempted to start stabbing things in the air because that's when you run into trouble and that's when you stab yourself in the finger. And when you do that, you know about it. So I can keep turning the project and just keep checking it, giving it a little squeeze and making sure everything feels nice and even. And the nice thing with this wall is because it's very rough, um, it doesn't show up too much in the, in the way of indentation. So it's very forgiving when you're making a project, which is why I like using it on, on certain projects like mice and hedgehogs. So what I'm doing here is I'm just deciding what side needs to be the belly and what side needs to be the back. So the flatter side is going to be the front of my hedgehog and the rounder side is going to be the back. And all I did then was place it in my hand and push it downwards. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking another piece of the fox sheep wall and this is going to form our head or the, the top half of our hedgehog. So this piece measures about so 12 inches there or thereabouts by about two and a half inches now these measurements they don't have to be exact um, they can just be a rough guess sort of a, as long as they're in that ballpark then that's absolutely fine so what we're going to do is we're going to roll this piece so that we've got a nice long lump of wool so you want it to be relatively thick so you want it to be around two to two and a half inches in um, width and then it's probably going to be about three inches in length so I'll just measure that for you just so you can see so oh what a guess three inches in length and about two and a half inches in width so I'm going to take the sausage which I've rolled it's about five times and I'm just going to place it on the top of the ball that we've made and what we're going to do now is I'm going to hold everything down with my non-dominant hand and then with my dominant hand I'm just going to felt the sides in and anchor those into position now you definitely want to wear finger gloves for this um, I'm holding it in this position so you can see where I'm felting but ideally you want to be holding this with the rounded back down against the mat and then carefully felt it that way. But just be very careful of your hands. Make sure you're wearing your finger gloves and just take your time anchoring it down because we definitely don't want to stab ourselves. And I'm obviously doing some risky things with my thumb there. Don't do that. <laughs> so that's just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm just gonna felt those sides in so it's all nice and secure. So you can see now you've got this slightly raised area on top of the ball. And all I'm doing is I'm just using that medium needle again and I'm felting it downwards because we don't want it to be too lofty. We don't want that air in it. We want to felt that air out of it and then integrate it into the ball that we've already made. So you can't really tell where the, um, 
the sections are that we've added. The joins, that's the word I'm looking for. We can't tell where the joins are. So make sure that you keep felting. But what you want to be doing is ensuring you're not felting the top part as much as the sides. You want to keep the top part slightly higher than the side parts because we're looking for a kind of, um, as you can see there, I'm pushing it downwards, sort of an angled shape for the head. I'm just using my fingers just to squeeze it so that I can see where it will sit and then I'm felting it into place. And I'm still being quite robust with the needles. I'm felting quite firmly down, getting everything integrated nicely in with each other. So I think that I want a bit more bulk on the top of the hedgehog um, so that when I come to add the facial features in later on I've got a bit more leeway in terms of how much space I have to place the eyes and the, and the muzzle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more extra wool to the top of the ball just to give me um, that additional bulk and that will create a bit more of a, a larger, cuter face. So it's two and a half inches in width. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosely fold this over now. So one, two, three, four, and then just fold that last end in for the, the fifth turn. And I'm just going to place that on top of the head and it measures, it's about two and a half inches in length. Oh no, three inches in length. So that's going to sit nicely on top of the piece we've already added. Don't fold it too tightly, fold it quite loosely and that way you'll find it's easier to felt that into the piece and not have too many joins appearing. So I'm just again felting around the edges, making sure I move my fingers out the way when I'm using my needle and ensuring that I'm holding the ball on the mat at all times so that I'm not at risk of injuring myself. So I'm just gonna fold that, just pull that piece over a bit more firmly and just felt those ends in there. So that it just saved me a bit of time in a moment when I come to felt the top half because it's already pulled relatively taut. And then just felt the front in so that you get a nice smooth finish to the piece that we're creating. And it's quite nice because it's quite a nice simple shape to make so it's not too stressful in terms of trying to get the shape right. It's kind of just adding pieces in and then just seeing, checking it, seeing if we're happy, felting it in and then we can always add to it if we want to add more. It's always better to add less and then add a little bit more in at a time rather than adding loads in and then finding it really difficult to remove it at a later date. So when you're needle felting and you do want to add um, additional bulk into a piece, just go very gradually, don't go in all guns blazing. And then you, that way you can get to the desired size that you want without adding too much and it being too big and bulky. So I'm quite happy with that, that uh, shape now. So we've got a kind of egg shape. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take another piece of the same wool and we're going to be creating the muzzle for our hedgehog. So I'm just going to measure this and it's about sort of nine and a half inches sort of discounting the sort of the fluffy end and two inches in width. So we're going to form the muzzle of the mouse. So I'm going to take the piece and I'm going to fold the top end over so I've got a nice flat top part. And then I'm just going to pull it over to the right and then bring it down again. So I'm creating a triangular shape. So next, this bottom half, I'm going to fold downwards again 
and then the side part I'm going to fold that down and then I'm just going to fold it over the other side so we're creating an even triangle. So once we've done that I'm just going to check it against the ball we've already made. I'm just going to felt that into place and this is going to create almost kind of like the the larger area where we're going to be placing our nose and our eyes on the hedgehog. So I'm just going to felt the sides down so it's anchored into place using my medium needle again. Don't worry about this fluffiness, I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just hooking it over with my felting pen and then felting it down on top of itself. And whilst it's quite bulky, this piece, it will felt down quite nicely. So don't worry if you think oh, it might be a bit too big, it'll be fine. So felting down the sides. And what we want to do is just felt those sides inwards slightly so we don't have those sharp corners of the triangle that did form as we, as we folded the piece over. So I'm just going to felt into the side angles of that piece and ensure that, again, everything is integrated nicely in with each other. So I've got kind of like quite a bulky front half of the hedgehog now, and he's starting to look a bit, a little bit like a moomin. So I'm just gonna felt into the, the top of this as well, because we don't want it to be too um, aerated, too lofty. We want it to have that kind of medium amount of firmness again. So I'm just giving it a squeeze, seeing where the areas are particularly loose and I'm just felting that down. And you want it so that it kind of felts down so that it's angled, if that makes sense. So where I'm felting here is obviously going to be more felted. And then as you get more towards the centre of the nose, it's not as felted. So in terms of the distance from the head, so it's about one and a half inches from the top of the head and about one inch from the bottom of the hedgehog. But again, it doesn't matter if this is slightly different for yours because all felting projects end up looking slightly different. I've never managed to make any kind of animal or person with wool um, and for it to turn out looking exactly the same as the last. They always look slightly different because of the way the wool works and the way the wool sits. So I'm just going to felt this in a bit more firmly, giving it a squeeze. And I like to squeeze it as I go, just so I can see the kind of shape that I'm aiming for, for the finished, for the finished piece. So just felting underneath. And don't worry if you've got any kind of harder looking edges, because we're going to be putting more wool over the top, so that it looks a bit more smooth and even. So don't worry if you've got any hard edges or any obvious joins at the moment. So I'm just, what I'm doing now is I'm just pushing that wall into the, towards the center. So I'm creating that area where I'm gonna be placing the nose. I'm still using my medium needles at the moment. Getting those ends. You want those ends to be nice and, of the, of the triangular piece we've just added, you want them to be nice and flush. So it's all felting in nicely at the moment. And I just keep checking to make sure everything looks symmetrical. And then just give it a squeeze. And then once I've squeezed, where I've squeezed, I just use my needles and felt that into place. So I'm going to swap now to my fine needles because I don't want to be quite as firm now. I want to create like a gradual firmness with my fine needles and the medium needles are great for that initial 
felting everything down and getting everything into a sort of a shape that we want. But the fine needles give us a bit more control over how much we want to felt something. So it's, it's a more of a gradual process so we don't go in too heavy handed and felt everything down too much too quickly. It gives, gives us the opportunity to just felt it a bit, make sure we're happy with it, felt it a bit more, getting that firmness but not going in too hard. Going around the sides again. And then always remember to check for symmetry because there's nothing worse than finishing a piece and then realizing that it's uh, it's all wonky donkey, one eye's uh, slightly more um, pronounced than another eye or one side of the face. Um, it looks bulkier than the other side of the face. So I'm just going over the front of the nose now with the fine needles. And what I'm doing now is I'm creating almost kind of like a slide, like a ski slope. When you have like a ski slope nose, that kind of look is what I'm doing here because it adds a bit more character to our hedgehog's face. So again, just keep squeezing, keep pushing things in. So I'm happy with that now, that looks good. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to take some of the fox sheet wool and I'm just going to place it over the top of what we've just added, as I mentioned before, just so that everything is nicely integrated in with each other and you can't see any of the joins. So I'm still using my fine needles at the moment and I'm starting from the outside to get all those fluffy ends in. So from the outside and sorry from the inside outwards. So starting from the inside and then pushing it outwards and that a bit like making a cake just helps to dissipate any sort of air bubbles or anything like that. It get, gets rid of all that air underneath and so it sort of gradually pulls the wall down sideways. It's always good to think of when you're adding sections of wool onto a needle felted piece, think of it like icing a cake. So you want to keep everything nice and flat without any creases or ruching. You want to pull it down nice and taut. So I'm just going to felt this piece down now. So working again from the inside outwards. And then once we've got all of the peripherals felted down, we can then concentrate on the central parts of the hedgehog. And by using the fine needles, you're not um, sort of ruining any of the, the shaping that you did earlier on. Whereas if you were using a medium needle now, you'd be in danger of felting it down more than you wanted to. Whereas all we're doing here is we're just felting on that additional piece of wool just to blend everything. We don't want to shape anything too much at the moment. We kind of want to keep everything the sort of same size that we, we made it a moment ago, if that makes sense. I'm just going over underneath sort of what will be where the hedgehogs and legs are going to sit. And now I'm just going to go round sort of the muzzle nose area and give that nose a squeeze. And this is when this is the fun part now because you can really start to shape the face of your hedgehog. And at the moment he looks a bit like a a potato is probably the best way to describe him. Um, but as soon as we get that nose and those eyes in, you'll see him transform into uh, a little hairy hedgehog and he'll be super cute. 
but at the moment he does resemble a bit of a, a dodgy spud. So just be patient with this. Don't feel the need to rush. Take your time with it because this is the really important part, the shaping. You don't want to get frustrated and just do everything really quickly because then you might end up felting it too much and losing your shape. And I mean, that's not a huge, great big deal because you could always add some extra wool on to kind of add the bulk back in again, but it just takes more time and it's just better to just take your time and get it right the first time. So what I'm doing here is I'm just checking to see where I'd like my eyes to go because there's nothing worse than committing yourself to a location for the eyes by felting it in place and then all of a sudden you, uh, you discover it's not the area you actually wanted. Whereas if you use your fingers to kind of press into where you're thinking about having the eyes, um, you can then decide as to whether you actually want to do that or not. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking another small thin piece of wool and I'm just felting that over the top again, um, purely because I could see, you may not be able to see on camera, but I could see a few joins still that I wanted to cover over. So I've just sped things up a bit because you know what to do now um, in terms of uh, felting over additional pieces of wool to kind of hide those joins. So I'm just again going from the inside outwards, making sure that all those ends are nicely tucked in and I'm still using the fine needle. I'm, I'm not using the medium needle at the moment. And then once I've got all those ends tucked in, I'm just going to go over the front of the hedgehog, ensuring that all the looseness is felted in. Again, I don't want to make it too firm. You want it to be a medium firmness. Don't worry too much about the back because we're going to be putting our brown wool, which is going to create the look of the spines onto the hedgehog later on. So don't worry about the back too much. All you, all you need to be concerned about in relation to the back is that there's a sort of a relative firmness there, but, but don't worry too much because that will come from when you're felting the front anyway, as you're pushing the wool in it creates that firmness naturally, so so don't worry. So I'm just gonna go over the rest of the hedgehog's face with my fine needles, making sure I've tucked in any bits of looseness before we move on to the next stage. I'm just gonna pinch his nose out a bit more, just make sure his head is even, and he looks good. So let's move on to the next stage of the tutorial, which is adding his nose and his eyes. See you in a moment. <laughs> 